The shops at Liberty Craftworks utilize techniques that are in some cases centuries old. Next up, we head to the pottery shop, where beautiful plates, pots, crocks, and more are churned out every day. How are all of you? Good. Good, welcome to the pottery shop. I think one of the most important things that we try to give people uh, when they come and visit the pottery is um, a sense for those traditional techniques that were done to create the pottery itself. So a potter started with this and he made or she made the shape. Then she passed it off to me and I sculpted the little uh, bird on the nest up at the top. And then I passed it off to uh, Anne, the other decorator here, and she uh, did all of this wonderful slip trail. It shows another dimension of what it was like to live back then. Like people didn't have supermarkets, they were growing all their own food, they needed to preserve it for the winter so that they had enough to eat. And ceramic crocks and uh, bowls and that kind of thing were very important for that process. Particularly crocks, that was probably the single most important uh, piece that potters would have made back then. People could use that for pickling uh, vegetables, for salt curing meats. They often came with a couple of bands right around the top that you could use to attach a piece of cheesecloth to keep debris out of it. So everybody would have had uh, ceramic ware in their homes. The potter was a very important part of any community. It's become more of an art form you know, in the 20th century and the 21st century, so we kind of don't realize that at one time this was really an, actually a very important uh, service the potters provided. We're trying to convey the types of things that they would have made back then, and we're doing it in much the same way that they would have done. We do take advantage of some modern equipment. We've got electric wheels. We've got you know, natural gas fired kiln, which they wouldn't have had back then, also electric kilns. But what we're really trying to preserve is the type of wear that they would have made. You know, and if you guys feel the inside of these yellow plates, you can actually feel the carving that's been done in there. And that's gonna be different from our other main uh, decorating technique. This is called slip trailing. There were a wealth of techniques used uh, in early American pottery. Of course, those first potters uh, were farmers. They were the early colonists coming over and uh, they made a few pots on the side uh, for food storage, for, for just daily use. And uh, that was pr predominantly made out of redware. So it was a, a very easy to find clay. It was very low fire clay and they would use uh, techniques like slip trailing, which is using a liquid clay like a paint, or uh, they would use a technique called scraffito, which was a technique that uh, the German potters were, were using, where you uh, put a paper-thin layer of slip over uh, a red clay piece, and then you carve through that slip in order to uh, make your design. Around 1800, of course, pottery shifted, and uh, they all moved to stoneware, which had its own uh, processes. So we try to capture all of those processes and, uh, and not only present them to the public, but also demonstrate them live. And so if I pull up slowly with even pressure, then it just gets taller and taller. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Usually there's some sort of throwing being done or trimming or one of the finishing processes. There's always some sort of decoration to see. We uh, expanded the shop greatly in the past year, and in, in the process, we added this you know, kind of uh, glassed-in kiln area so you can get an idea of what the kilns look like that we use. And uh, often, we'll be loading or unloading. So there's a lot of different parts of the process that you can see. Often, I think people have the idea that it's only throwing on the wheel and that there's nothing else to it. So we give a more, uh, I guess, nuanced view of what that's all about. People are floored when we tell them that, you know, the, the process from pulling out a, a lump of raw clay until uh, you have a finished piece ready for sale is about 30 days, you know, and most of that time is waiting, of course, but it, yeah, it's a long uh, process, you know, it's not for the instant gratification crowd, you know, you've, you've got to be patient with it. About 90% of the work that we make goes to one of our gift shops or gets sold uh, through one of our catalogs. And we also supply many of the historical sites, uh, the two farms, uh, as well as uh, the Eagle Tavern restaurant. So if you eat there or visit one of those houses, you'll see our, our pottery in use. 
Right now we're working on items for our Christmas catalog, which comes out in October. It's uh, a whole range of things. We're working on you know, press molded plates, uh, salt glazed stoneware, pieces, you know, coffee mugs, crocs, all kinds of functional wear. And so it's fairly challenging. You know, it's many hundreds of pieces, so we have to really sort of you know, just dive in and get it done to produce things that people actually, I know they're going to buy them and use them and that they have uh, real grounding in history. I love the whole process. You know, it's just, it's a fascinating material to work with.